The upsetting scenes in Ukraine brought an unusually public response from the royals this week. The Cambridges and the Sussexes made statements, while Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall put the issue at the heart of their work. The Prince of Wales spent the weekend locked in talks with his advisors about how to express the anguish that he like everyone else feels at what he is seeing unfold in Ukraine, but also what he could do to help practically, the Daily Mail's royal editor Rebecca English tells this week's Palace Confidential. This included a speech and using his remarkable convening power to bring together leaders of five charities of which he is patron, to help Ukrainians in Britain better support family and friends at home. Despite their actions, royal biographer Hugo Vickers thinks the Queen will keep her customary counsel and leave the comments to her son and grandson. The Queen has always remained above politics and she has always remained silent, so I would imagine on this occasion that she will continue that policy, he says. The Queen is not a stirrup of trouble, she is a tremendous conciliator. And so I think if Prince Charles and Prince William have had their say, I don't think there's any need for her to say anything. Meanwhile, the Daily Mail's diary editor Richard Eden pointed out an extraordinary spat on social media, in which fans of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex attacked the embattled Ukrainian leader. This was something extraordinary, here we have President, Volodymyr, Zelensky fighting to survive, his life is under threat and he was able to send a message to the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, thanking them for their support for the people of Ukraine, he says. He starts then being abused by some of the more strident social media followers of Harry and Meghan saying why haven't you thanked them? His fellow panelist, author and historian Dr. Tessa Dunlop, wondered whether these accounts could have a more nefarious origin. We have to question, to what extent are those trolls and naysayers actually bots, controlled, incidentally, possibly by Russia, she says. I've often wondered, about, the sort of militancy behind some of the Sussex following. Makes me wonder if they're actually real. Another news, Margaret was the younger sister of Queen Elizabeth II, and was arguably one of the most loved royals. Renowned for her rebellious nature and reputed romances, her party girl lifestyle was the subject of intense media speculation. Margaret passed away in 2002, but thanks to the crown, a whole new generation of royal watchers have become captivated by the prince's glamorous ways. Often described as a modernizer of the royal family, her marriage to, and subsequent divorce from, Anthony Armstrong Jones, a man of non-aristocratic or royal blood, paved the way for future generations of royals. The princess was one of the first royal celebrities, a status inherited by the late Princess Diana and, more recently, Kate, Duchess of Cambridge and Meghan Markle. As a result of their similarities, royal author Tom Quinn has claimed that the princess would have loved Meghan. Speaking during a recent episode of the Today for Daily podcast, he said, she would have, loved Meghan. They were both from the same mold completely. And, in fact, I think Margaret would have thought that she had helped move the royal family forward to a position where they were prepared to allow Meghan to marry into the family. Because, you know, as you know, as the world knows, Margaret wasn't allowed to marry someone because he was divorced. And the British public, to the amazement of the establishment, they all sided with Margaret and said, you know, not allowing her to marry someone just because he's divorced is ridiculous, it's medieval. And so she got so much sympathy for that. I think the royal family, in future, began to think, OK, we've got to at least modernize a bit. Royal expert Ingrid Sewer told, perhaps Harry has something of his rebel great-aunt about him, because he walked away. The princess was so gregarious and willful and nearly gave up her rights of succession to be with Peter Townsend. In the end she decided she preferred royal life. But I wonder if she regretted walking away from the love of her life. Perhaps one of Margaret's most famous love affairs was with group captain Peter Townsend, a divorcee who was seen by many as an unsuitable match for the young princess and queen's sister. However, at the time of Princess Margaret and Peter Townsend's relationship, the Church of England opposed divorce. As head of the Church of England, it is thought the queen could not allow her sister to marry a divorced man, and subsequently, Margaret and Peter did not marry. Miss Seward added that Margaret would have understood Harry's royal struggles as they were both spare to the air. She said, being a spare is the most difficult position. Margaret would have supported Harry because royal life is relentless, even in their roles. There is currently speculation that Harry and Meghan may return as part-time royals in a dramatic comeback. Speaking on the matter, Tom Quinn said, both Meghan and Harry believe that when the elder royals die, in other words, Elizabeth, they may well be able when Charles is king 
be able to come back and be the part-time royals that they really wanted to be. So that they would be six months, as, working royals and six months in the States or wherever doing their own thing.